Lately, I've been on a quest to find the perfect 14-inch laptop. As far as my experience is concerned, this porridge is too hot, and this porridge is too slow. This porridge is not too hot, nor is it too slow. But how does it taste? Let's find out. Slap Tech. This, then, is the Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 3 AMD. The ThinkPad line covers all sizes and immediately becomes the industry standard in whatever space it occupies. This particular model is a 14-inch workstation class Starship and promises to deliver peak performance and battery life. The main reason I bought this particular letter and size of ThinkPad is because it has the AMD 6850U in it. It's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU that boosts 16 megs of cache up to 4.7 gigahertz and has a TDP of 28 watts. Compared to the Ryzen 9 6900HS, it runs 0.2 gigahertz slower, is fed half the watts, and its performance is only down 10%. That's pretty damn incredible if you ask me. In other news, the P14S is equipped with a 14-inch 16x10 non-touch 1200p display and is powered by a 51 watt hour battery. The AC adapter is the smallest 65 watt unit I've seen yet, which has a 9 foot cord length up to 12 if you upgrade the from the wall cord. It also plays nice with any 65 watt USB charger. I plugged in with this Dell charger, and it never complained or charged any slower. The battery life of this mobile workstation is unfortunate. Not because it's short, but because it would be much longer if AMD would get its together. If any sort of power saving measure is implemented, streaming video will have visual and audio skips and stutters. I mean, anything less than best performance, including battery saver. So all these use cases were measured using the most power hungry settings available because otherwise I'd be sacrificing a standard usage experience. An April 2023 BIOS release was supposed to fix these issues and it may have greatly reduced them, but it certainly didn't eliminate them completely. While in best performance mode, I was able to get 4 hours and 30 minutes of internet work use, just under 4 hours of streaming video, 2.5 hours of Moopin64, and an hour of PC gaming. If only fun things are on the agenda, like Word or Excel, then Battery Saver can be used to extend the internet work timer to 6 hours and 15 minutes. And if a little bit of stuttering here and there can be tolerated, this machine can stream for about 7 hours in best efficiency mode. Looking at the outside of the ThinkPad, the whole chassis is encased in a tough but flexible magnesium shell. The keyboard and palm rest have a good amount of flex to them, but it's a durable and reliable material. The display is nice and rigid with almost no flex, and the little eye in ThinkPad lights up, meaning that it is indeed a true ThinkPad, and good luck keeping it clean. After typing a full sentence, it's over. The whole computer is visibly dirty, plus it's quite the effort to wipe down the palm rest, and I can see how these laptops get permanently stained so easily. And for the love of all that is good and holy, don't leave it in direct sunlight for extended periods of time. Watch my ThinkPad P50 review to see what I'm on about. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right, there's a smart card reader because business laptop, the vent, a USB 3.1 Type-A port, and a lock slot. Over on the left is the Gigabit LAN, two USB 3.2 Type-C ports, HDMI 2.0B, a second USB 3.1 Type-A for a total of two standard USBs, and a headset in. No Thunderbolt because not Intel, and two USB Type-As is good enough, I suppose, especially since they're on both sides of the laptop. Using it as a desktop replacement should be pretty easy, and if more than one monitor is needed, get a hub. After unseating the seven captive screws inside the P14S is a bit of a disappointment. There's no memory slot, so what's bought is all there is. Rumor has it that the Intel version does have upgradable memory. I'm guessing that's because AMD's integrated GPU really does need the fastest RAM possible, and there's no way in hell they're going to let the end user replace it with a larger, but slower, module. In other news, two heat pipes carry high temps away from the CPU and memory to the single fan, the storage can be upgraded, and there's a slot for a modem. But if more memory is needed, better shell out them their dollars, or get the Intel ThinkPad. 
The keyboard of the P14S is the atypical ThinkPad keyboard. There's a generous amount of space between each key, they're large, feel good, and have very predictable impact. As always, there's a muscle memory hump to overcome when transitioning from any other keyboard, but it won't take long to be acclimated, and it's always a good time. This particular model has a backlight that's subtle and classy with a noticeable difference between the two stages. If you've never used a ThinkPad before, the left control and function keys are in the wrong spots because China has few money, but you can swap their functions in the UEFI because, as everyone knows, few money can't buy respect. I tried to use them as they're laid out, but because I'm a noob, I just couldn't do it and swap the roles. I'm much happier now and will never look back. It also has dedicated home and in page scrolling keys, and the escape key doubles as a function toggle. Hey, every other manufacturer, here's your template. Do at least this. Don't take away from it. Start here, and then do whatever you want. I'm not going to name names, Asus, but just f do it. And if you want to, put the page scrolling keys somewhere else or keep them as hotkeys because, damn it, I keep on pressing them on accident and it's quite irritating. The touchpad is what it is. In a world where 14-inch laptop manufacturers are gravitating to huge, comfy touchpads, Lenovo's in their own little corner with, if we give them a nub, they'll be happy. And you know what? I am. And it has physical keys. I'm excited. They're on top, not the bottom, but I'll take them. When I want to right-click at the bottom corner, it's predictable, and I get it 10 out of 10 times. Plus, the acceleration feels natural, and I haven't found myself overshooting or undershooting any targets. The screen on the ThinkPad P14S is pretty nice. In modern ThinkPad fashion, there are a plethora of options, ranging from glossy blinding touchscreen to boring matte non-touch. Of those, this is the boring matte non-touch version. It gets three ticks over comfortably bright, so probably 350, maybe 400 nits, and gets dim enough for a pitch black room. Outdoor use on a gloomy day is possible, but sunshine is going to be a challenge. The white balance is perfectly neutral and colors are accurate and not poppy. One might say they appear a little dull. The deep blacks and bright whites tend to be cut off at the tippity top of the spectrum, so don't throw out that desktop monitor you use for Photoshop quite yet. Ghosting is better than average, but not spectacular. It'll work just fine for 2D side scrollers and won't present any serious issues. Something else worth noting is that this particular screen is a FreeSync display, and FreeSync should be utilized whenever possible to reduce audio stuttering while gaming. Just like how all of Intel's integrated GPUs demand VSync for a smooth picture, this laptop demands FreeSync for a normal gameplay experience. Point blank period. Speaking of playing stuff, how are the speakers? Meh, they're not bad, but they certainly lack bass. There's enough evenly balanced mids and highs to make for decent audio, and when I'm watching movies or playing games, I'm not thinking about how terrible the noise is. The volume will fill the room and doesn't crack or hiss at the max level. Even though there are two speakers, there's almost no stereo separation, since both noise blasters are right next to each other under the hood. The bass from Calm Like a Bomb by Rage Against the Machine is weak and only audible at 75% and up, and the deep bass from The Package by A Perfect Circle can't be understood. If you've only heard that song through these speakers, you wouldn't know it's there. Here's a test of the webcam on the ThinkPad P14S. 1080p, I've got three LED lights on directly in front of my face, so this is an excellent lighting. Here's a test of the webcam in poor lighting. I only have one LED light on this side of my face. I'm also talking in a lower tone of voice to see if you can still understand what I'm saying while my super loud AC unit is on in the background. Something else that's cool about this webcam is you can turn the thick shutter on and it won't cut off the file and it won't remove you from any conversations like Zoom or Teams meetings.
And if you turn the thing shutter back on, it just goes right back to the video. I've alluded to the system performance of this laptop a couple times already. For a quick recap, it likes to stay in best performance mode to give a normal PC experience. Anything less, like optimized best efficiency or god forbid battery saver, you're gonna get audio and video skips and stutters. In YouTube, any browser, even Firefox, skips and stutters. If it's off the plug, it has to be in the highest performance mode at all times, with VSync on and FreeSync when available. This is because of AMD's poor software in relation to the TPM security features. AMD did release a big fix for it, and it probably helped out a lot, but there are still lingering issues after that fix. Even after disabling all the security stuff, I still see dropped frames and stuttering audio in YouTube. And I hope you like Firefox because that's the only browser that works perfectly when in best performance mode. This problem also affects audio recording, so if you're laying down the sickest guitar lick ever, make sure you're either plugged in or in best performance mode, otherwise there will be artifacts in the recording. Okay, got that out of the way, now on to the good news. This CPU is fast and loads programs very quickly. It's a 28 watt TDP unit and this laptop isn't afraid to give it around 40. While under full load, the whole package does warm up considerably, but it's never scorching hot and totally uncomfortable or annoyingly loud. It's actually more annoying during light tasks like word processing or Excel in a quiet room when you can hear its constant little clicks of static electricity like it has a miniature old school hard drive in there spinning away. In the grand scheme of things, it benchmarks just under the AMD 6900HS and the ASUS G14, which is very fitting seeing as how it's called the 6850U. If a significantly faster CPU is needed, then so is a larger notebook, like a 15 or 16 inch PC that can throw 60 watts or more at a modern CPU and get away with it. On to gaming. Yes, it has the much lauded 680M integrated GPU in it. It far surpasses Intel's strongest Iris Xe GPU, and benchmarks show that it rivals the old GTX 1050 Ti. Honestly, it is a very good GPU to game with and showcases excellent performance when it has good driver support. Be prepared for unexpected compatibility issues like stretching and clipping because of the odd resolution, or things like the Vulkan API reducing the brightness in Valheim to unplayable levels. All that stuff aside, once you get the right resolution, proper detail levels, and learn which API to use, if given a choice, anything will play decently well in low details and resolutions. Even Dungeon Siege 4 is very smooth at low details and 50% resolution. Naturally, no dedicated VRAM means low textures are a must, which is still the case in games as old as Diablo 3. So is it really as good as a GTX 1050 Ti? Not quite. Benchmarks are fun, but they don't always account for VRAM. In other news, your mouse hand and lab should prepare for uncomfortable temperatures. It's not unbearably hot, but things do get a little toasty. At least it's quiet, and the fan noise will never, ever be a bother. And gaming on battery power will drain it pretty quick, but at least performance will only take a minor hit of around 15%. Emulators are a joy with the P14S. The lowered amount of ghosting makes 2D games very palatable, and the speakers are not half bad at all. The colors are a little dull compared to the competition, but the accurate white balance makes up for it, and I never thought the colors or sound quality was lacking in any way, shape, or form. I do wish the battery lasted a little bit longer while using Citra, just over two hours while on battery saver is, well, it kinda sucks. And systems up to Dolphin will emulate smoothly at the native resolution of the console and be an absolute joy to play. For the bottom line, the first question to answer is, should you buy this P14S over the Intel version? It does have some livability issues compared to the Intel equipped brethren, but these issues are overshadowed by the far greater 3D performance against Iris Xe and even the Quadro T550. Yes, the Quadro has four gigs of dedicated VRAM, just like the GTX 1050 Ti, but it has nowhere near the horsepower and the VRAM isn't enough to make up for it. The only reason you should get a Quadro is if it's known for a fact that the specific software you use to work and feed your face has greater performance on NVIDIA hardware. As for me and my personal tech journey, can this laptop dethrone the small but mighty Latitude 7420 as my mobile daily driver? Remember, not even the beefy ASUS G14 could do that. 
The answer to that question is yes, but barely. It doesn't have as good battery life as the Latitude, and I'm giving up six sweet hours of Citra emulation, but I'm trading it in for a massive boost in CPU performance, and not even a hit to portability, it's just a little less than extremely portable is all. Plus, it's a ThinkPad, which is super classy and unassuming, so people aren't going to judge me for using it, which is well within a person's right to do so, because last time I checked, this is still a free country. For the most part, Hunter Biden got a misdemeanor slap on the wrist while Dr. Gal Luft is being indicted. How could you make it more obvious that your administration is corrupt? In conclusion, students get a thumbs up, as in not two, but only because of its price tag. It's super easy to carry around campus, has enough battery life for a full day of classes, and then some, since if anyone can actually take advantage of the power efficiency modes without being annoyed, it's students taking notes in class or composing in the cafeteria. It's really hard to beat, but a better alternative is still the Dell Latitude 7420 or 7430, because cheaper, better speakers, and weighs like a feather. Casual gamers can stay away. Again, the price becomes the prohibitive factor. It's spending as much as for an Asus G14. And if what you really want to do is game and not grow up, be the Peter Pan you've always wanted to be and get the Zephyrus. You chase that shadow, you beautiful son of a bitch. Competitive gamers all cowl in unison in the looming shadow of the ThinkPad. Everywhere you turn, there are 30 ThinkPads to one Acer Nitro. They are everywhere, and they are Legion. Actually, the Lenovo Legion is... is... never mind. This ThinkPad can definitely be a desktop replacement. It has all the power and ability to drive the most demanding CPU-heavy tasks, and doesn't make enough heat to throttle in the slightest. It also features enough holes in the side for a flexible range of peripherals, but you still might have to go shopping for a different cable or two to adapt. Home users should definitely go for the Dell Latitude. In a world where the Latitude 7420 exists and can be found for cheap on eBay, there's no reason to put up with the price of the ThinkPad, much less the uncomfortable user experience of the AMD ThinkPad. Plus, it still has a nice screen, better speakers, and longer battery life. Or go for the XPS instead, whatever, it's your life, your money, waste it however you want. This has been a review of the Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 3 AMD here on SlapTech. If you think it was a good review, give it a thumbs up. If you think it was a bad review, well, you probably didn't watch it up until this point anyway, so I can say whatever the hell I want. Go touch grass. Rawr. If you have any lingering questions, leave them in the comments below. You can also remind me to give a status update on this thing, as I'll probably be keeping it around for a long while. And if you want to see more reviews, consider subscribing. Next up is the 11-inch Lenovo ThinkPad that I've been teasing for, like, the past three reviews. It's slow, it's dumb, and it's gonna be lots of fun, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and you guys, have a good night.